I'm asked to graph a function, my first thought will always be, what? The domain D. Absolutely. This is between negative infinity and negative 1. This is between negative 1 and 2. And this is between 2 and infinity. Can anyone identify the domain of this function for us? <coughs> One more time. Well, let's look again. Correct. Negative infinity to negative 1 unit union negative 1 to infinity. Very good. So let's put it in, in the table. Of course, 2 has to be in the table as well. At 2, I have a parenthesis facing left and a, bra a bracket facing right, touching. Another way of presenting this would be this. We've done this before. With those problems in which we were supposed to come up with an example of a graph, right? So here, I will be using this. In between negative 1 and 2, I will be using x squared minus 1, and here x plus 2. Any questions so far, please? Any questions? Okay, so I'm going to plug in negative uh, 3. 1 minus minus 3 will be 4. The square of 4 is 2. This is ugly. It's the square root of 2. Or here, inside the parentheses, if you want, if you prefer that. When I plug in negative 1, I get 0. When I plug in 0, I get negative 1. And 4 minus 1 is 3, inside the parenthesis. 2 on the other side is 4, and with 3 will be 5. Any questions so far? From left to right, can anyone decide the first or the pair, which one it is, and I'll, <coughs> I'll plot it for you. <coughs> Very good. Negative 3, comma 2. Next ordered pair is kind of ugly. Negative 1, 1 1.41. Negative 1, 1.41 somewhere here, but obviously with an open point. That's the first branch. It's done. Don't touch it. Don't extend it. To the right, nothing. Then we have negative 1, 0. 0, negative 1. And um, I should have put also 1 in here. It's an important point. And 2, comma 3. With an open point. I know that this is quadratic. And it has to look like this. That's in the middle. It's x squared minus 1. And then 2 comma 4. It's a full point. And 3 comma 5. Uh, say it again. Yes. I thought you, you said that there was an error. So this is the graph of the piecewise defined function. 
The range is between negative 1 and infinity, in case. We're asked for, to do that, to find it. Does the function have a removable discontinuity? First of all, let me ask, um, is this function continuous everywhere? It's not continuous at? Good. Is it continuous from the left or right at any of these two? Yes. So limit as x approaches 2 from the right of f of x equals f of 2, continuity from the right. Very good. Now, does it have a removable discontinuity? Let me refresh your memory what the removable discontinuity is. Yes, please. This one? This one? Yes. It's zero negative one. Zero negative one. Oh no, the one next one. This one? Yeah, negative one zero. <laughs> this one is this the origin. This is O, the origin for this, like oh, Y no. and X. This is the origin. It has so nothing to do with the graph. So there is no... Of course not. I would have connected it somehow. This is the origin. It has nothing to do with the graph. Okay, so um, does this function have a removable discontinuity? Let me say this is a removable discontinuity, where both sides go to the same number. Nope. There is no removable discontinuity here. Both of these two discontinuities are jump. So not continuous, jump. Not removable. There is no removable discontinuity here. One more time. A removable discontinuity is something like this. Where both limits left and right exist and are the same. Next question, please. Is there anything else? Is there anything else? Which one? Four. four. What does four say? Yes. Okay. Please summarize all the information in a table before you decide how to graph the function. So I'm going to read them and put them in. I like to start here with this one. f of 0 is 0. Limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x is 0. y equals 0, horizontal asymptote. Limit of f of x when x approaches infinity is 0. Now I see 5. Okay. Uh, limit of, x of f of x as x approaches 5 from the left is negative infinity. 5 from the right, positive infinity. I see the limit of f of x as x approaches 2 from either side is infinity. Negative 3. Negative 3 from the left is 2. Negative 3 from the right is 0. I summarized all the information in the table. I took care of each and every piece, and now I'm ready to come up with my solution. There is more than one correct answer, of course. 
I uh, will consider x equals 2, a VA, and x equals 5, a VA. I will graph the asymptotes first. So this is an overkill, y equals 0, uh, at 2. Three, four, five. One, two, three, negative three, negative two. Oh, I forgot about that. Sorry, sorry. I can do whatever I want, of course. But I cannot stop there. I'll go to negative infinity. That would be wrong. I can continue. So, <clears throat> a negative 3 on the other side is 0, and 0 is 0, on the left hand side is infinity, fine. In between, from, from positive infinity to negative infinity, fine, no problem there. And from positive infinity to 0. This is my take on it. Of course, there is more than one correct answer. You can come up with anything you want. Is there anything else? Anything else once? Anything else twice? Is there anything else from the past lectures or anything that you can think of? Anything else? What we are going to continue with has nothing to do with the f this test on Wednesday. <clears throat> if uh, 10 minutes from now you remember a problem that you would like to work on, I'll stop and I'll work on that problem. Is there anything else that you have in mind? Anything. Anything else? Okay, finally we talk about differentiation. Rules. Which means <clears throat> we are not going to be continuing using this. This is not a rule. This is a definition of the derivative. So this is not a rule, we're going to put the definition aside, and we're going to learn a few rules. We're going to use it a little bit just to show you how we get to those rules, but moving forward we're going to use the rules that we learned in this chapter. Now, let's suppose just for a couple of functions, like uh, let's say f of x equals x squared, and f of x equals the square root of x just two simple functions, I would like to still use the definition of the derivative and then we'll draw a conclusion about the first differentiation rule on um, differentiating polynomials. Ready? So let's start with this and I think we did it. Did we do this one last time? That's okay. Let's do it one more time. So let's say I want to determine the derivative of this function using the definition. So then that will be f prime of x equals the limit as h approaches 0 from the square root of x plus h minus the square root of x divided by h. Of 
course. And of this is 0 over 0, no questions uh, about that. So then x plus h plus the square of x over the square of x plus h plus the square of x. We did this so many, so many times. We rationalized the top. And if that's the case, please tell me what you get at the top. So this would be limit as h approaches 0. Very good. And divided by h the square of x plus h plus the square of x. And we know what happens. I, I need to write the say one more time. I, let's say I got a, a lazy, and now I can drop the limit operator. And the simplified form will be the top goes to 1, and the bottom goes to. That's it. So moving forward, please help me not have to go over this again. But yes, I will if I need to. So moving forward, the square root of x prime will always be 1 over 2 the square root of x. So this is the function that is the derivative of the square root of x. What is the domain of the function? Domain of function square root of x. Very good. What is the domain of the derivative? Very good. So f is not differentiable at x equals. It has a vertical tangent. Perfect. OK, <clears throat> let's look at um, x squared also. So now we're looking at f of x being x squared. And one last time in this chapter, unless we need it again, um, x plus h, everything squared, minus x squared divided by h. So can anyone give us this? Very good. Thank you very much. You made me so proud. So proud. Of course, terms without x without h must go away. Of course, the top has to have an h in common, all terms, because I know that this h in the denominator must go away. So 2x plus h. And the answer is very good. No, when, x, when h approaches 0, that goes away. It's 2x. So, in short, this is the power rule. So, we had x squared prime. We bring down the power, and we subtract 1 from it. In general, can anyone give us this rule for differentiating? polynomials. This is power n. Okay. To be exact, <clears throat> to be exact, I should multiply by the inner function prime. Let's talk about this. Because in this case there is no need. y equals x. What is the slope of this function? 1. So what is x prime then equal to? 1. Right. So or you say, I bring down the power and subtract 1 from the power. And you get 0, right? So let's do that. So x to the first power prime, mimicking this, 1 times x to 1 minus 1. But 1 minus 1 is 0. And how much is x to 0? Of course, we assume 0 over 0. This is another indeterminate case, but that's not the case here. x does not equal 0. What is the answer? 1. So keep this in mind. We don't need it here because this is 1. I'm preparing you for something 
that Kyle already told us today. Okay, so any questions? Any questions? Okay, so now let's um, go and uh, apply this in different uh, situations. Before, <clears throat> I would like to uh, also look at one other function. I lied. So this is the third one. I like to use a definition on this one. Yes, please. Yes, the derivative. Yes. So let's uh, use the definition. Limit as age approaches zero from e to x plus h minus e to x divided by h. f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. I'm using the same definition of the derivative f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Ready? Now, <clears throat> let me caution you, or just not caution, but just to refresh your memory that a raised to n times a raised to m is a raised to n plus m. Do you agree? Yeah. But I can also go backwards, meaning e to x plus h is e to x times e to h. Do you agree with this? Perfect. I'm going to use it right this moment. So let's take a look. So limit as h approaches 0, e to x times e to h minus e to x divided by h. Look at the top expression and say, I know what you're going to do next. And I promise you that if you're on the right track, I'll do it. I cannot cancel out something from the top with something from the top, right? Um, Say it again. I, I didn't hear. So what do you think I'm going to do at the top? The only thing I can do. Say it again. No. I just came back from there here. Well, I split it like this for a perfect for, for a particular reason. What is the reason? What is the only thing I can do? I have a term and I have another term. What can I do? There is only one thing. Yeah, of course. They have e to the x in common, right? So e to the h minus 1. <clears throat> Absolutely. That's why I split it. So we can see that there is a common factor that we can pull out, correct? Good. Now, h approaches 0. This is a quantity that has nothing to do with h. We'll go in front. This is not swapping the operators. It's just it's a quantity like a constant. It's 5 or 10 or 15. I don't care. It doesn't depend on h. So this is limit as h approaches 0 from e to the h minus 1 divided by h. I would like us to put this in the graphing calculator to see what it equals to. Ready? <coughs> in y equals please under the function, we don't have h. Please be careful with parentheses. We need parentheses at the top. So e to the x, and then minus 1, close the parentheses, and divide by x. We will be able to prove this very easily, but I need we need one more step. OK? Before we do this, we can prove it. OK, so then I go to the second end um, table. And I plug in numbers close to zero. Negative point one. Uh, negative point zero one. Uh, negative point zero 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 one. 
uh, negative point zero 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 one. Um, point zero 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 one. Point zero 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 one. So, according to our little experiment here, what would you say this equals to? And what is the final answer? Right. So e to the x prime equals e to the x. So this is the function. I can't think of another. This is the function whose derivative is itself. OK, I'm ready for some problems. And I would like you to choose anything you want. They're all kind of off, in my opinion. They're not interesting examples. But please choose any problem you want. We are on page 181. Okay, thank you for a lot of comments. I will choose. <laughs> I can't wait for you to choose. It will take you like forever. Okay, uh, let's say 22 on page 181. So we have y equals the square of x plus x over x squared. And you could say, and you will be correct, what's this? You have not taught us how to differentiate a ratio. And I'll say, yes, I agree. But at the core, this is not a ratio. So this is x to 1 half divided by x squared plus x over x squared. I copy the base and subtract the exponents, 1 half minus 2. I copy the base and subtract my expo the exponents, 1 minus 2. 1 half minus 2 is negative 3 halves, and x to negative 1. So you can say, what did you do? You didn't do anything. That is correct. I just rearranged the function. I did not differentiate yet. I did not use the power rule. I didn't do anything. I just used algebra to make it nicer. And you can say this is still ugly, and I would have to agree. It really is. But it's much easier than the previous form, and especially because I don't know a rule yet. So now I can write y prime. And remember the property or the power rule. I bring down the power, and I subtract 1 from the power. Negative 3 halves minus 1 is negative 5 halves. I bring down negative 1, I don't have to put in parentheses, times x to negative 1 minus 1, which is negative 2. I will not even attempt to, um, to try to simplify this. I will leave it at 6. So it's negative 3 halves times x to negative 5 halves minus x to negative 2. And I'm going to delete that because I really don't need it. OK, so um, now when we look at uh, problems like 34 on page 182, uh, y equals x to the fourth plus 2x squared minus x, 1 comma 2. <coughs> It reads, find an equation of the tangent line to the curve at the given point. Find the equation of the tangent line to the curve at the given, at the given point. Well, I know y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1, where this is 1 and this is 2, but I have a problem with this. Not anymore, really. <clears throat> So what should I do? I, please forgive me. Do you have any questions on the previous problem? I don't, I don't know if I asked enough. Any questions on the previous problem? Always stop me. I don't ever want to go on if you have a question. Is this OK? 
Is it? Okay. Good. So now how do I determine the slope? Very good. So let's find y prime. We bring down the power and we subtract 1 from the power. We bring down the power, multiply by 2, and subtract 1 from the power. And what is x prime? Very good. Now, so since it, we have we have several options here, but here is the, the option that we have, I recommend. What does this symbol mean? It means the value of y prime when x is 1. So it's 4 plus 4 minus 1. 4 plus 4 minus 1, it's 8 minus 1, 7. And this is the number we need in here. So we have y minus 2 equals 7x minus 1. And we're done. 7x minus 7 but plus 2. Okay. Yes, please. Yes. Yes. If I had f of x, yes. If I had f of x, I would have written f prime of one. Um, okay. Fifty-two. Let's read fifty-two together. For what value of x does the graph blah 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 have a horizontal tangent? What does that mean, horizontal tangent? So 52 on 182. And here's the function, f of x equals e to the x minus 2x. And one more time, find what value of x does the graph uh, of this function have a horizontal tangent. What does horizontal tangent mean? The derivative is zero, right? We had that uh, little example here with that graph. At this point the derivative is zero, and at this point the derivative is zero. Horizontal tangent. Horizontal tangent. Very good. So, I have to find f prime of x and then set f prime of x equal to 0. So here the answer is the e to the x prime is e to the x and this prime is negative 2. So all I have to do is set them equal to each other. So I have e to the x minus 2 equals 0 or e to the x equals 2. What type of equation is it, and how do I solve it? Obviously, it's an equation. Very clear. Say it again. Yes. Awesome. It's an exponential equation. We apply natural log to both sides. So x will be natural log 2. And it says for what x value? So at x equals natural log 2, this function will have guaranteed a horizontal tangent. Any questions? I would like to, before we, uh, if we have time, we continue, but I would like us to uh, look at something like this. Find a second degree polynomial P such that P of 2 is 5, P prime of 2 is 3, and P double prime of 2 is 2. So let's write the problem. It's 63 on page 183. So we are given P of 2 is 5, P prime of 2 is 3, and P double prime of 2 is 2. First of all, let's think about a polynomial uh, of degree 2, it says. 
find a second degree polynomial P such that conditions are fulfilled. Yes. Yes. Can anyone uh, give us a polynomial degree two? Yes? What is the general form of a polynomial degree two? AX squared, perfect plus bx plus, very good. This is a polynomial degree two. And now, how many variables we have are unknowns in this problem? Three, the little a, the little b, and the little c. And how many conditions we need in order to solve for little a, little b, and little c? If we have three variables, how many conditions we need? Three. Perfect, and we do have three. Okay, so from the first equation, what would you write? It says p of two is five. So please give me p of two. Four a plus two b plus c. This is this equation. Now the second equation has p prime. So let's find p prime of x first. Can anyone give us p prime of x? Very good. 2a x plus b. Very good. Now we want to write the second equation. Can anyone dictate the second equation? So it's going to be 4a plus b equals 3. Very good. This is our second equation. Now the third equation has p double prime. We have to find p double prime first. We can plug in a function, anything, if we don't have the function. So can anyone differentiate this function one more time and give us the answer. Very good. And now the third equation would be 2a equals 2. p double prime of 2 is 2, but there is nothing I can plug in. There is no x. So this means that 2a equals 2. So now I have three conditions. 2a equals 2, 4a plus b equals 3, and 4a plus 2b plus c equals 5. So, what do you think about that? Where is the starting point? So I start with 2a equals a, with equals 2, very good, and what would that mean? So then from here, I know that a equals 1. If a equals 1, I put it in here. So 4 plus b equals 3, which guarantees that b must be very good. And now this is 1. This is negative 1, and I will be able to find c. So 4 minus 2 plus c equals 5 means, so this is c equals 3. Would you agree? Then we have the unique polynomial that has those that fulfills those three conditions. And that is x squared minus x plus 3. There is no other polynomial that 
fulfills the given conditions. Any questions? Any questions? Okay, I'd like to start. We're not going to finish. I know I have uh, about uh, nine minutes left. So I'd like to start uh, the next section, 3.2. There are two rules, and if we do a problem each, then it's good. Yes, feel free to check whatever you get on the test on Wednesday with what we studied today, but you don't have to, right? And I you will not be get given credit for that, but you can. So 3.2 is the product and quotient rules. Product and quotient rules. If we have a function multiplied by another function prime, your book presents this um, a rule a little bit differently. Use the method you like. I call this function 1 and this function 2. And I always keep it in order 1, 2, 1, 2. But that's not what you're... They use a different, a slightly different method. So this definition is f prime times g plus f times g prime. Do not try anything whenever you see a product of two functions. You cannot do anything else but this. Your book shows this reversed. It doesn't matter. You can use that or mine. So 1 prime times 2 plus 1 times 2 prime. But that's because I'm used to it. Now you can say, I don't like it. This, I like the books method. Please use the books method. I'm fine with it. Whatever works for you, works for me. OK. So here's an example. If we have 2x cubed, let's say, multiplied by another function that is 2x minus 3. You can say just distribute and you're going to differentiate, differentiate the polynomial. Yes, of course. But allow me to illustrate the derivative of a product. So this is my function 1 and this is my function 2. I have to follow the rule. I differentiate the first function and I get by um, Yes, very good, 6x squared, multiplied by the second function. That's what this says. I differentiated the first one, but I copied the second one. Now I'm here with plus. I copy the first, and I differentiate the second, but the derivative of this function is just 2. And I'm done. Yes, you can distribute, you can combine like terms, etc. Let's do that. So this is 12x cubed minus 6x squared and plus 4x cubed. And then the answer is 16x cubed minus 6x squared. This was just an illustration of the product rule. But yes, you could from the beginning distribute there and you would have gotten the same answer. Yes. Paul, go ahead. Oh, they are multiplied 2 by 3. Thank you very much. Of course. No, I'm not hungry, and no, I'm not tired. I have no reason other than I just apologize to you. My apologies. Sorry. Thank you, Paul. No, I wasn't checking whether you were asleep or not. I promise. I was just multiplying 2 by 3 instead of 6 by 3 in my head. I don't know. OK, so now the, let's look at the quotient. If we have a function divided by another function, do not try to invent anything. This is the product rule, and this is the quotient rule. You can try anything. You cannot say the f prime over g prime. That's not allowed. The top is very similar to the product rule, but it has minus in it. Identical, but minus in it. So f prime times g minus f times g prime. The denominator is simply the function in the denominator squared. So these are two rules that we have to memorize. I know I have four minutes left. So 
just give me an example or let me uh, uh, allow me one second to show an example we can choose from the book you could like a ratio yes 14 on page 189 and we have x plus 1 everything divided by x cubed plus x minus 2 I think it's x cubed yes it is so allow me to use one more time one two you use it if you like it if you don't like it I'm fine so one prime times two minus one times two prime over two squared one and two so this is the top function which is number one and this is the denominator which is number two so when we differentiate this you can if you want already write the denominator squared you're done with that and now you're applying really the product rule at the top but with minus in in the in between do not switch anything here what is the derivative of this function perfect times the second function so the derivative will be one times the second function which is x cubed plus x minus two i reach this stage now i have to copy the numerator but I have to differentiate the denominator. Can anyone differentiate x cubed for us? And plus 1. Yes, I will combine like terms. I will try to clean it up. But there is nothing else I can do here. Please do not be tempted to simplify anything, top and bottom. So this is x cubed plus x minus 2. And now I will distribute minus 3x cubed minus x minus 3x squared and minus 1 over x cubed plus x minus 2 squared yes I will combine like terms these two happen to go away negative 2x cubed minus 3x squared and minus 3 over x cubed plus x minus 2 I will rewrite it with minus in front You will see in later chapters why. I recommend that. 